the vested miniature, and there's Steven getting it all right. But then the sort of like it looks really good. And you know, yeah, looks like but after a while, you just it's like well, whatever. Yeah, go away. I gotta get my work done. Yeah, right. exactly. That works out. I will consider it a total win. But yeah. there were definitely some. Hi guys, welcome, welcome. Hello. Hello. <laughs> welcome everybody. How is everybody doing? Please tell me in the chat box how everybody is. I have this errant hair going on. We're gonna not, we're gonna not focus on that. <laughs> who's on, who's, who's here today? Say hello in the chat box and where are you joining from? And also, is this a first time? Are you here for the first time? I'd like to know who's new. Definitely say hello in the chat box. Hey, Evelyn, I know you're not new. You're here all the time and I love that. Hi, Montreal. Hey, Arlene, good to see you. Um, Let's see, Um, who else is there? Wanda, wow, we've got Newfoundland on the line. Great, and welcome back, Wanda. Hi, Benny, Maureen, Mary. We are just on the four o'clock mark. So as you guys are joining, I'm gonna, we started like a little late for me, like a minute in, a minute before. So I'm gonna wait just a few more minutes to let people join. Hey, Connecticut. Hi, Anne. Great to see you. Hi, Elizabeth. In, um, oh God, it's happening so fast. Hi, Tina. Good to see you. You're here amongst friends. Hi, Susan Farnick. Oh, how is everybody doing? Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and start with housekeeping before we bring on our guests. But also before we do any of that, um, just a shout out to our friends in the Ukraine, in Ukraine, um, and just know our hearts are, are with them right now. And we, we're hoping for a very, very quick end to all of this craziness. There are a number of Ukraine miniaturists and Russian miniaturists out there all having trouble. So I don't know if you're following them. I'm trying to put, I'm gonna put a program together in the next week or so, just to give visibility to those makers. Who are having a hard time, um, and and um, you know, just a, a message out there to support them, because they're having a hard time, especially the folks in Ukraine. So our hearts and minds are with you, and hope for this is a uh, hope this hap this this gets better soon. Um, hi guys, and welcome. Hi Anita, good to see you. We got Canada here, Rhode Island's here. Just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, I mentioned on the I, I I started to mention what is happening in the mini world um, that you guys should know about. Tom Bishop show is happening in April. The London Dollhouse Fe Festival is in May. And uh, there's a smaller show. We've got to support the smaller shows because that kind of like rolls into the bigger shows. But there's an Arizona show happening in March, March 26th and 27th. Arizona State is the 43rd annual miniature show in Arizona. So look for that. Uh, you Also, uh, if you missed uh, any of my recent Meet the Miniaturists, uh, they're all available on my YouTube channel, including Best in Miniature Contestants a couple of weeks ago, my Meet the Miniatures with Jay Kupchak. That's something not to, to miss. Um, and then I also had Jessica Orak from the Office of Collecting and Design, OCD, uh, on. And that was a really, really fascinating and interesting one. And shout out to Donald for helping behind the scenes. He's going to plop in uh, some of the links if you want to go ahead and click those on now. And you'll have those for later on. I do have another live stream happening next Sunday on the 20th. We're going to have the we're going to have the winners from the hbsminiatures.com competition on. I don't know if you know about miniatures.com, but they do an amazing job uh, encouraging folks to create beautiful beautiful things out of these like three or four wall kits. You should you really should see some of these beautiful creations. We're going to have the winners from uh, some of the winners from that competition on. You're going to want you're not going to want to miss that. Uh, and then, uh, uh, as you know, if you don't know, if you, if you don't know anything about me, I do promote miniatures every chance I can get. But I also uh, really I sell miniatures. So if you are looking to sell a collection, or if you have a friend or a family member that you want to collect, that you want to sell a collection on behalf of, uh, reach out. Uh, if you want more information, we're going to plop in information about uh, how you go about selling your adored collection, uh, what your options are. I do a webinar on that. I'm planning one. Um, mid to late April, early May. So look for that. But your best bet is to sign up for my updates so that you never miss what's going on, especially my webinars. So look for that. And, and, um, and then finally, you want to join my patrons club. I do have exclusive content that I offer to my patrons. I'm going to plop information in there too, that um, 
In fact, we had a really great Patrons Club event with Anel Ferguson. She is an Enigma fellow, an amazing artisan who works with needlework in tiny, 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 small scale. She was amazing. Um, if you join my Patrons Club, I can give you a link so you can watch that. But you'll also, once you join my Patrons Club, you're invited to all of the exclusive events um, and activities that are um, specifically for patrons. And it's sort of a pay-as-you-go thing. It's not like a Patreon account. Um, it's like just pay-as-you-go, as-you-want kind of thing. I don't know. I don't really have a lot of structure to that. But um, with that, I am incredibly excited to welcome the Best in Miniature finalists. Now, not a lot of spoilers on this. We're going to tell you who won this event. But these are pretty much the finalists from the Best in Miniature. And there's Steven. Steven Edelston. How are you, Steven? Just let me set this up. Um, I'm sorry? Fine. Thank you. Yes, fine. Thank you. Hello, hello. Yes. So just so folks who folks who don't know this, this is a reality based television event that pits 11 contestants who are building their mini dream home. Uh, there are uh, several judges, including Michael Lembeck, who's an interior designer, and Emma Wada, Waddell, who is a miniaturist out of the UK. Um, so this is an awesome television show. It's a 10 part, 11 part series, I believe. And you are one of the contestants on the show. So thank you for joining. I'm so excited um, to have you here. Tell us a little bit, and I'm gonna bring up some of some of the imagery behind your work so that people can see a little bit about what right. you, the things you, you, you create, but tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got involved in miniatures and, and your art. Do you have an art background? Uh, well, uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm really a, a painter um, and, um, uh, I, I, I paint, but I've always fiddled and made models and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, during sort of um, um, COVID and lockdown and all that sort of stuff, um, just uh, fiddled more, that's all. Um, so, so really, it's, it's relatively new, but I've always built model aeroplanes and railways and stuff. So it's just sort of uh, the past couple of years that, that sort of I've... I've taken it to the you know done more stuff with it really yeah yeah but 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 you are a paint you you would consider yourself a painter for first yes yes I'm a painter yeah I'm an artist yeah. I mean yeah. I've, I've managed to sort of like scrape a living <laughs> the past 40 years <laughs> being a painter so yes and for the most part in full size were you working in full size all that time Yes, yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, just painting and sketching and restoration. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah. And then when, when did you start making miniatures? Um, um, sort of a um, couple of years ago, really. I mean, I've, I've, always, yeah. I've always made models. I've always made models. So like model airfix kits and railways and stuff. Right, right, right. While you did your full-size art painting. But then yes. at some point you brought, you brought that, that full-size work into small scale. And uh, yes. only, only a short time ago. So I guess yeah. what I'm trying to get to you, what, what, um, where was the inspiration behind moving to working in miniature? Because um, you had modeling? Because that's, they're so different, would you say? I mean, yes, I, su I suppose so. But, but we, we've been doing home education <laughs> with a teenager. So we made various castles and models and stuff. <sighs> Yeah. And, and then sort of like my, my son persuaded me to sort of like, you know, put stuff on Facebook and Instagram. And it's sort of gone from there because it's, it's sort of right? like. I, so, yes, so yeah. it, it just it just got its own energy. Is that what we're saying? Like you put stuff out there and it became something that you didn't expect it to become. Did you not expect yeah. to get sort of the reaction? Uh, no, not at all, really. I mean, it, it's just a bit of fun. It's it's sort of, you yeah. know, it's something that I, that, that I just fiddle with. I, I consider it fiddling and just an yeah. extension of, of painting and making stuff. I, right. I, I don't think of it as sort of like my my great calling in life. I've been painting paintings for the past 30 years and you sort of think someone would notice you for painting, but <laughs> it, it's sort of like, you know, doll's houses. <laughs> right. So, so right. It, it's not so, something that I planned or, or whatever. Well, so there's, I'm showing, I'm sharing some of your, your work and actually it, it's pretty broad based in terms of the types of things you made. It's not only small scale painting. I see shadow box work. And of course there's the dollhouse. So um, I guess some of my, my questions would be, you know, can you, can, can you describe, because you have a very unique approach. I, I want to say it's whimsical. It's Trump Loy. What would you say your, your, um, your style is very unique. Um, it, it, it's it, it's sort of everything I do sort of has to look 
like it wasn't done yesterday. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So whether it's new or not, it's supposed to not look like I made it yesterday in a shed or I you know, bought it yesterday from a shop. It's, it's all got to look like someone bashed it out in a shed 100 years ago. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my ethos. That's, that's yeah. everything I do, whether it's books, furniture, beds or sewing little buggy cushions. It's sort of <laughs> it's got to look like it was done 100 years ago. Yeah, the, um, I stopped the the slideshow on, I guess this is, is this one of your doll's houses or are there more than this? I mean, this is probably enough, but. I've got a few. <laughs> got a few. Uh oh, you laugh. That means there's more than a few. So it definitely has a, that whole Renaissance era look and feel to it, for sure. Is, is that sort of yeah. where you were going? Like, it definitely looks like it's out of the 17th century. Well, it, well it's, it's sort of, it's sort of. It, it sort of is, but it's sort of uh, late 19th century. Yeah. But it's a collection from sort of before that, if you see what I mean. So, so, so like an English country house isn't just yeah. sort of like 1850. It's got stuff from it way before that. So they just haven't bothered to sort of like clear out the house. It's, yeah. it's got lots of history in it. So, so everything is sort of like it's, it's, it's pre-1900, but it could be 1700. It could be 1800, but it's still yeah. in the house. Yeah, but definitely does not look like it was made yesterday, for sure. Well, well there you go. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And it's and it like I said, it's really very, very unique in terms of the style. It's whimsical. It's it's um, it's got a, a just a lovely feel to it. And I do see that your cat has a lot of um, uh, a lot of of screen time. <laughs> you, yeah. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. But you your cat's cat. name, what is her name? It's We've got three. That was, we've got three. We've got Ramesses, <laughs> Stellini, and Moomin. That's Moomin in the bow tie. That's I Moomin. love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So we we did plop in your Instagram account. I just really found just a few of the images. I love all the images on your account because they they, they I love that you plop your cats in there. I think that's great. So is everything you do is it all scratch built? Would you say, or do you pull in pieces from other places? No, it's all it's all built by me. It's all scratch built, right? Yeah, right. it's all just bits and pieces and just sort of like stuff out. Of the I mean, because I, I, I do a lot of restoration work. So so uh -huh. I, I, I make gum boxes and things, antique pistols. So you get a box. So you'll take out the inside and use the inside for something else and sort of like use the material and old wood. And so it's a way of recycling stuff. Right. Because I, you know, I hate to throw stuff out. Sort of, I've got yeah. lots of bits of brass and bits of wood, and think, oh right, that could be a, a, a doodah. Um, yeah. uh, so I'm, 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 I'm having phases of sort of like think, oh, what could I use that for? Oh right, that can be that. I mean, I've just done a whole load on on um, which you might like or might not like teeth. So, <laughs> so <laughs> that's all out there somewhere. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. So everything is scratch built which is pretty great. Um, and you, and so it's, and you do refurbish, you pull pieces of material. So it looks like it just sounds like you, um, you pull in pieces and materials from everywhere. Yes. Yeah. 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 I just don't like spending money. That's all. <laughs> would you say painting is your first love? What would you say is your favorite part of making miniatures? Um, I, actually, actually, actually thinking of how to make something. So it's it's sort of but it's it's all it's all my own ideas. So it's it's sort of like a combination of sort of like how would you make a bed out of uh -huh. out of sticks or something or other. So it's 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 the challenge of doing it, but it's also being able to replicate it, yeah, easily. Because mm -hmm. I'd, I'd 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 hate to sort of like just make one piece that's taken me ten years to make and sort of get all excited and then I get hit by a bus the next day. I'd, I'd prefer to have tried lots of different things to a reasonable standard rather than spent my whole life just trying to think oh, I've got to get it right. It's sort of, yeah. so it's, it's like you've got to be able to repeat it and repeat it because odds yeah. on someone would say oh can I have that one? And I say well I've just sold it or whatever. Yeah. Well, so that was my the other question. How how did you find? Um, transferring all of that that how-to into now being on a program making a, a full a, a, a full dollhouse you know in miniature a miniature work how did you transfer what was your biggest challenge being on um, that show and getting something done and, and just getting used to the environment i think mm -hmm. just because you're being followed by lots of people all around you and sort of like because it's it's sort of like you know, if you film someone in their natural habitat, sort of like making a cake or something or in the kitchen or doing the washing up, it's just a weird process. And to actually 
produce something creatively with people looking at you because it I, you know it just doesn't happen in my shed it, it's sort <laughs> of like right. it, it's, it's difficult to get used to that but once you've got used to it it, it yeah. sort of it, it does lessen up because first of all I was trying to paint you yeah. hand shaking and it's sort of like <laughs> you're so nervous and you're, oh god yeah and, and it's you sort of get used to it and, and it yeah. is it is a competition and it's sort of like if I'm in a shed the only person I'm competing against is myself but if if you if if you if you actually know that sort of like Philip over there and Suzanne over there and Cello over there and they're all sort of like you know beavering away making masterpieces, you sort of think, oh, I've got to do something. It's, right. It's, it's it's sort of is is good for you because it makes you realise that sort of you 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 have to get on with it. You've got to yeah. be able to produce, and and that's a skill in itself. It's it's a, to be able to produce some anything under pressure. I think yeah. is a skill. Is 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 you know it's 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 like public speaking. It's a good discipline to have. Yeah, and that's a whole added extra challenge on top of what you have to do, which is create. So. I can only yeah. imagine, actually I do, I, I don't have to imagine having been in that situation that it's not, it's certainly not easy. Well, so what is next for you? Do you sell your work and how could we find um, where you sell? Do, can, can, do, you, do people commission work with from you? Uh, yes, I mean, people can get me through Facebook or Instagram or whatever. I haven't got a shop or anything. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, I, I've got so much stuff. I've got mountains of it. I've got, it's just sort of like, I, I keep producing because that's, that's my thing is that sort of, I don't just want to produce one thing. I want to know right. that right. I, I, I've got it in my head. All oh, right, that's how you make a sofa. So it's all, it's all in there. And, it, and it's sort of, but I've, I've got buckets of it under the bed. It's just sort of like... <laughs> But, but the thing is that sort of I, I, I keep getting ideas and think, all oh, right, I can do that house. And I know I'm going to make a house out of yeah. such and such a thing, an old cupboard. And I've got enough furniture just to do it and paintings and stuff just to get on with it and do it. Yeah. So people can, if they want, they can reach out to you on Instagram and, and, and direct message you there. Awesome. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. But I haven't got the greatest business plan. And so I don't really sort of, so it's sort of... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but yes. well, I, I, I really, I love what you've done on the show. I encourage people to go check out the show if they can, where they are. Um, we're going to bring you back. So stand by. We're going to do a round robin at the end. So hang on while um, we bring up one of the other finalists and we will see you in a bit. Um, so um, we're going to bring up Suzette. Yeah. And um, Suzette works also in miniature. And this is one of the greatest things about this show. Hi, Suzette. Hi. Um, the fact that you're all so broad based in terms of the types of creative that you do. And I think it just brings a, a wonderful breadth of different works and viewpoints and perspectives on miniatures. And I think one of the great things about, you know, Stephen's work is all very whimsical and hand painted. And then there's your work, which is just awesome that has a whole dark edge to it. Talk a little bit about the work that you do in miniature and take us a little bit back. When were you first inspired by miniatures? Have you always been working in small scale? Well, I first got inspired by miniatures because I was taking photos of toys oh. and it was just a hobby, just something to take the edge off. I've always been a creative person, always into art. And I just decided that I'm going to start making little, little things for my yeah. toys, for my photos to make them more come alive, to make them come alive. Yeah. And then the more miniatures I made, the more I realized, oh my God, these are so cute. I want to continue doing them. And then yeah. I would post it online and people just started asking me to make it for them. So it just kind of steamrolled from there. That's well. So they found you. And I do want to mention that you have quite a following on social media. So they are finding you. And that was actually one of my questions before I forget to ask you, who, who are those followers of your work? I feel like they, they might be coming from everywhere. I might be discovering miniatures through you. Do you feel like that's the case? I think uh, a lot of my followers I know are horror lovers. They're so horror lovers. They love dark things. They love spooky. They love horror. And I think that's what attracts them to my work is that. Um, it's the horror that, aspect. Everyone, everyone just loves the, the scary aspect of all my work. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I feel like, um, you know, when you show them a category and you, you combine that with miniatures, it just raises the awareness all, all over the, all together. You're, you're actually, I, I mean, I pulled some of the images, but I love the, the small scale work that you do. Do you work in different scales? I know the show was mostly 12 scale, but I feel like a lot of your work is much smaller than that. Talk a little bit about the scale. 
I, I, when I started making miniatures, I was just working on 112 scale because mm -hmm. the, the miniatures that I was making them for were for action figures, which are around six, seven inches high. Ah. And, um, but after that, I just slowly started progressing into 124 and 148. And that's normally the scale that I work with. You went smaller. Yeah. yeah I went smaller because I wanted to make these houses and I didn't want to spend three, four months making a 112 scale horror house. Right. I wanted to make them within a month. Right. Right. So you could work, you could do more when you're working in a small scale, but the attention to detail has to be sort of there. And I think oh. a lot, a lot of your, the strength that you bring to the miniatures is, is your, the, the, the weathering techniques, the aging techniques. Talk a little bit about that. Was that a process that took you time? Like, weathering is there? definitely a process. It takes hours. I mean, sometimes when I'm, I'm weathering products to look like they're aged and old and they've been, they've been standing for years and years is you have to spend hours and layers of weathering. Layers. Layers. Um, yeah, definitely a ton of layers and detail. I am obsessed with detail. I feel like detail is what makes a piece magical. Yeah, yeah. And you're also very generous with sharing your techniques and work. I know you have a YouTube channel. Um, I think I'm sharing right now as part of a, a, a tutorial. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a tutorial. It's mo It's just a little... A little view into what goes into making these miniatures. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. People love the behind the scenes stuff. So, yeah. I also love watching them. Yeah. So, let's talk about the show. So, um, you brought all of that um, interest in sort of dark and horror to your work on the show. L let me ask you this because I, mean, I want to, I want to fast forward a little bit to to the show. Do I have some of the images that, that are posted online from the show? Um, how much of this was thought of in advance before you got actually to the show? How much did you have to think through? Because this is pretty extensive when you get down to it. How many rooms did you fill and how much time did you spend thinking before you got on set? <laughs> well, we knew we were going to build a house and in a house, you already know the rooms that are going to be a part of a house. You have a kitchen, you have a bedroom, bathroom, etc., And before we even got onto the show, we already were thinking about how am I going to fill in these rooms? How am I going to design them? I knew, of course, that everything was going to be spooky. Everything was going to be creepy. And um, I think week by week, you just think more of, you put more thought into the story and these little elements that you want to add into to make them fun to look at. Yeah. So, you know, we talked a little bit about you know, how you worked in small scale, how you can do more with in less time. What was, how did that affect your, when you got <laughs> to this full 12 scale piece, what were some of the challenges that you faced? Oh my goodness. I've never made a one 12 scale house. I've never made a doll house. You didn't. Uh, no, I've never done that. So that was very new to me. I've never made dollhouse furniture. I normally just make homes I make right. tiny, tiny little homes so everything that I was making was very new to me uh -huh. um, but I feel like once you already understand how things work you can if you have a, already a creative mind you can kind of just look at something and figure out how to make it right doesn't matter how big or small it is yeah. Well, I think one of your other strengths, besides your just artistic ability in making miniatures, is composition. Because a lot of um, what we saw, at least from what I saw, and I, you know, I only saw four of the episodes, was you know how you were able to stage these beautiful these beautiful rooms. Um, talk a little bit about that. What because that's a whole nother you know skill set. You can make a beautiful chair, but it's really putting that whole room together that <laughs> makes it just super awesome. Oh, like the, sorry, if you hear um, commotion in the background, it's my cats and my dog, uh -huh. but um, I feel like you, you really just need that, the eye of what looks good and how to place items. Yeah. That kind yeah. of, I don't know. I feel like I've just always have had that part mm -hmm. of me. 
Yeah. And storytelling. Part of comp composition and putting that room together is the stories that you tell. And a lot of your work tells stories. And I think that that's just, it's just wonderful to see. Really wonderful to see. You know, the Amityville Horror House. Like that, From that's how I think I found you was, was that piece. I think that, would you say that, that you're known really for that or a little bit of everything? <laughs> it's a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think one of my my most popular ones were was the uh, Psycho House that I built. Which one? Say that again. Psycho House. Psycho House. Oh, from Psycho. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've got to look at that. Well, what I really encourage folks to do, and we're plopping in Suzette's Instagram account. She also has, you also have a sales account. So you have a selling account. You sell your work, correct? I do, yes. And um, And do you take on commissions as well? Yeah, I do. Awesome. So what's next for you? Are you work? Is there something you're working on that you could tell us? <laughs> I am working it's in your head. I am working on a few that I can't necessarily say what I'm doing at the moment. Okay. Okay. But is that for you or is it a commission or you just can't say? <laughs> I just can't say. <laughs> I just can't say. <laughs> but it's creepy and it's it always will be creepy. All right. Very on brand. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, I encourage everybody to really check out Suzette's um, social media because it's just, it's, um, you're constantly feeding that, which is really nice. There's always something to see, always something to look at. And the way you present it is just really awesome. So we'll continue to be following. All right. So stand by. We are going to bring you back for um, a round robin. In the meantime, we're going to bring up our third finalist, um, our third person who was on the show from the finalist, and that's Philip Nuveen. And I've been following Philip for a long time. <laughs> How are a you? A long Philip? time. A long time. Not, I mean, at least as long as I've been in sort of business in the miniatures business, because um, yeah, when I started, I I discovered you because I was just scouring the internet. So, um, and I'm I've always been mesmerized by your work, and I'm not surprised that you ended up on this show. So, congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. For those people who might not know you, um, and I can't imagine that there are anyone out there doesn't know you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your work in miniature and um, and how you started. Yeah. Um, so I've been making miniatures for seven or eight years now. And, you know, it's, it's always, it's funny how like the things that you love in your childhood and stuff, it, for me, it came true. Cause it's like, I've always been enamored with models, architecture, building, um, fashion, pop culture kind of stuff. And that is literally, if you look at what I make, it's yeah. <laughs> miniatures of that. So, yeah. Uh, the, and that is um, really a big part of what you do is, is sort of that whole fashion genre. Um, is that, that, is that a big part of who you are? I can only imagine that is, and that's why you bring that to your work. And I'm going to, I'm going to try to pull up your, um, some images of that. So talk a little bit about that, how that transition happened. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm just, I'm a huge brand poor and I like, you know, nice, fancy, cool things. <laughs> and yeah. so, you know, what I choose to make in miniature is the things that I like in life. And so that's pretty much the bulk of it. But, you know, I try to branch out. I try to do more distressed kind of things, like some gritty city stuff. And, you know, the show mm -hmm. uh, was, um, it, it offered a lot of, um, it offered a lot of ways to kind of push yourself and try new things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, talk a little bit about that. What, what were some of the ways that you were pushed on the show? <laughs> unlike uh -huh. my other two, unlike my other two friends and contestants who are really good <laughs> at, at their, at their aesthetic, you know, and that's, yeah. you know, it's the three of us, it's like me, ultra modern, Suzette, you know, spooky Tim Burton kind of vibes and yeah. Steven with his kind of grand theatrics. Um, yes. Me, me being the like the clean design person, uh -huh. I always, I was always asked like, okay, can you show us more like, um, can you, can you rough it up a bit or can you, can you get a story in there? And it's like, I can't, it's ultra modern. I, I'm not, right. I'm not going to leave a spilled, a spilled drink on the counter. That's insane. Right. So do you feel like you were pushed a little bit to go in a direction that you weren't comfortable with to make things a little more interesting? That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course. And like, I get it. The, having like kind of a, a storyline with the props or the items is, is, is cute. Uh, yeah. For me, I, I prefer just, you know, <laughs> surfaces and clean Super. lines. Talk a little bit about the materials that you use um, and talk about the technologies because, you know, you're one of the, the first miniaturists, I think, 
coming to the um, coming into this category using technology in a great way. So talk a little bit about what what materials you use, the technologies, and how you know how to bring them to your work. <laughs> yeah. So um, fortunately, I, I'm in New York City. I live in Brooklyn. So. I've got a lot of plastic suppliers and stores, you know, in the garment district, there's all kinds of trim shops. So like any, any cool luxurious fabric or things mm -hmm. in that, I, there's and so many art supply stores. So I've, I've got a plethora of options for materials. And then, you know, a long time ago, I discovered 3D printing yeah. because I, my, one of my first miniatures I really wanted to nail is Barcelona chairs. It's my favorite chair. There's one right there. Yeah. And so I was cutting like acrylic to make the sides and I'm like, this, this isn't going to work. And so I stumbled upon 3D printing and then I taught myself how to render and build models that I could send to the printer. And so basically um, any furniture frame or chair, I 3D print and then I'll just paint and do the cushions and the detail work because it's perfect every time. And mm -hmm. I, I, I love 3D printing because you can make any thought that's in your mind. So yeah. I know some people in the miniature world knock it kind of like it's cheating, but right. you know, I run a small business. I need to get my orders out. I can't spend a week making a set of chairs. Not no, gonna happen. I think, I mean, you're raising a really good point because there are that there is that push and pull with the new, the new school, the old school. But I think at the end of the day, it's about your finishing techniques that make that 3D printed piece come to life. So, you know, is that, is that sort of how, you know, you bring, you know, make such beautiful things? Talk about the finishing process. Yeah, I think one of my, um, uh, one of my best assets or skill sets is, and I don't mean this to sound like um, pompous or anything, but like my taste level. Yeah. Because, you know, individual pieces, of course, have to be well done. But when you put it in the room and you style it a certain way and you kind of add your flair and your mm -hmm. visual pop and appeal, I think mm -hmm. that's why I, I'm pop. I'm, I think that's why it looks so cool and modern yeah. and realistic because as you know, you, you're adding that extra element of, I don't know, personal taste and style to it. Yeah. And, and in fact, you've done a, a fair amount of advertisers come to you to create models for them. Create, uh, correct? Like you've done a fair amount of advertising, mm -hmm. right? Print. What else have you done and what companies have you yeah. done? Yeah, I'm lucky enough to where like I run my online shop and I do that and that's a bulk of my income. And then being in New York too, um, you know, there's a lot of production here and there's a lot big companies and I'm lucky enough to have you know people have stumbled upon me and had some really great corporate projects which also push me so much in different directions and it's not only a nice paycheck but it's yeah. um it, it, my portfolio is very robust yeah uh, on my portfolio site and so yeah um I, I mean big Lenovo Bloomingdale's um, nice. Hermes Miu Miu there's nice. there's a lot of projects over the years so that's what I I love the most because it's um I don't know. I feel like it's a good accolade to have. Yeah. So let's talk about your project on the show. Clearly, you brought your point of view and your your skill set and design. Oh, look at that! My so mini, 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 mini. <laughs> it's a mini version of your piece on the from the show. Wow. Yeah, just to have on my on my desk as a memento. Oh, that's awesome! That is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, what was what do you say your biggest challenges were? With, with your work? I mean, they, we talked a little bit about them pushing you. That might've been a challenge. What was your biggest challenge? I mean, you didn't have your, did you have your 3D printer with you? Like, how did that work? You yeah, did. no 3D, no 3D printing. We weren't allowed to have 3D printers. No. Wow. No. So that, yeah, like when we did the dining room, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to have to make dining chairs by hand. And I mean, like, you know, I, I managed to make eight of them, but um, it would have been so much better to send the file and just <laughs> have them. Yeah have them in it more unique more more of a high-end end result because it's you know you can't and especially you know time manage I was really good at because I'm really good at that with my work life and everything but yeah you know I guess taking the opinions of the judges and um working uh -huh. it into what I wanted to do and where I what I wanted to show yeah well you did an awesome job all of you guys did a great job
thing. I'm just, I mean, I wish I could see the rest of this show, but I can't. I only got to see three episodes. But so we can find you. You have a pretty active social media account. People can find you online. You take commissions. You have a shop. We're going to plop that information in there. And while we're cool. waiting, we're going to bring everybody up because we're going to have a little bit of a group chat. Um, but while we're waiting, if you guys um, have any questions at home for any of our wonderful guests, put plop that in the chat box while we bring folks up, while we bring our... Um, guests up for some a little bit of chat because I have some general questions. You guys might have some general questions. Um, Ciela wants to know if you love her. Cello, 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 sorry. So you guys have other contestants on, which is so nice. That was one of the feelings I got was that you had this really great experience with one another. And you, uh, do you pretty much maintain like chats with each other? Who wants to take that question on? Yes, we do. Uh, <laughs> We yeah, we do. We have an active group chat. Yes. That's really wonderful. That is just really great because you had the shared experience. So why not continue it? And there's not many people who have this, especially in the miniatures world. Um, all right. So that was that was not a real question, but Cello wants to know if you love her. Um, let's I see. Prom I promise her I wouldn't flirt with Suzette too much on this video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the third wheel with Shello and Philip. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, love it. It's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Terry Young says Tina spoke very high low, high low of the three of you. Tina's actually on too. I saw her. Uh, um, I love, 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 love Tina. Yes, Tina's the best. You know, it, the best. This goes back to the breadth and depth of the talent and, you know, the experience that was brought to the table. Just kudos to the producers on that because they really did a great job of like just broadening out and not only bringing people from the UK, you had US contestants, you had obviously Canadian test contestants, which is really great. Um, so I guess, let's see, one of my questions, all right, who wants to take this one? What was the most fun part of the experience, given that it was just so crazy most of the time, but what was fun that you took out of it, besides the fact that you did make great friends? Anybody? Um, oh, you, Stephen, tell them. Um, oh. Well, uh, um, meeting a bunch of foreigners. That was quite good fun. <laughs> foreigners. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it, I, I'm, I'm not a great international traveler. And uh -huh. so getting out of my shed to go to Canada. Yeah. And meet just, I mean, uh, people who I've never imagined of meeting. Yeah. Who, who are, are there because they like miniatures. I mean, that, that was amazing. Meeting someone like Philip, meeting Suzanne, meeting Cello. Yeah. You know, and Tina, it's sort of like people, the whole thing about the internet is that, you know, that it's, you can contact people and sort of meet people and sort of like, it, it's made yeah. me realize that, you know, there is a whole world outside the door of my shed. So it's That's just- so it's, nice. it's, it's, That's it's, a great it's, takeaway. Yeah. yeah. Um, Suzette, what would you think, what, were you, what, was, what was the thing that most surprised you about this experience? Once you got there, you're on the set, you might've had a some one frame of mind, but like, what was like, oh, what would either shocked you, surprised you? Surprised me. Hmm. Yeah, when you got there, anything at all. I think it was how well you can work under pressure because I felt like I was going to just absolutely dis disintegrate under pressure. Yeah. But eventually you, you start to hit your stride and yeah. you just keep going and you, you just say F everything else. Were you able to sort of block out the cameras and the producers and just get your work done? Oh, well, after the first week, yes. You don't even notice that they're there anymore. I mean, you see yeah. that they're there, but th that first week was, it was difficult because that's all you can, f well, for me, that's all I could focus on was there are cameras in front of my face. There are people watching us at all times. And it was really hard to to yeah. ignore that but after a while you just it's like whatever yeah go away i gotta get my work done yeah right. exactly yeah <laughs> yeah um so philip what how yes. um what do you think do you are you happy with how uh the miniatures world was presented by the producers and by the show i think overall yes especially to an audience where miniatures is a completely foreign art form. I do wish that, and I was talking with Suzette and Cello about this, I think they should mount time-lapse cameras to each of our workstations, because mm -hmm. while you see us ultimately put something together, you don't really see us actually make complete one thing at a time. That's what I wish they would have 
and it, again, it was their first time, you know, how do you, how do you make a show out of miniatures and film it well? I, so yeah, that's the only thing I could think of, but I ultimately, ultimately, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So do you feel like what was anything done at home before you got there? Like, or everything was made on set? We, we were only allowed to make like the shell of our house, just uh-huh. like the basics, no finishing, no shingles, no, no um, decorative features. Mm-hmm. So we all shipped that to Canada. We all did that same process. Right. And um, everything else you see was made in an eight or 10 hour time period. Most of them. And so uh, mostly let's go back to let's go back to Steven. So in terms of like you had to get there, your piece had to be built yeah. there. Yes. How much thinking did you do beforehand? Because, you know, was there a fair amount of thinking, even though you probably didn't know what not enough, not enough, never enough. Um, but did you have in your mind? Well, let me ask you this. Do you, what was in your mind before you got there? Did it end up pretty much? Did you finish the way it was? And what would you do differently? I guess that's the question. I, I, I think I think uh, the, the finish of the thing, because actually building a whole room in eight hours and so actually doing the room, painting the room, making the furniture, getting it all right. But then the sort of like, for, for, you know, like Suzette was saying about the sort of like weathering stuff and making it, you're getting the right finish. It's not just the question of, sort of like painting it. Then you've got to sort of like weather it and make it, you know, for our sort of style and stuff. So it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's just the time thing. I mean, you, you, you'd like, I mean, I would like to sort of like wow, French polish the outside and sort of put wax on it and make it really dirty and grimy and sort of stuff. But, but yeah. there, was, there, wasn't, there wasn't enough time to do that. But, 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 but that's, that's, but it's a competition and, and people, and, it, and it, it is quite amazing that they yeah. actually got 11 people to make anything really within, within the time sort of frame. And, and it's, 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 it's good to push yourself and sort of like be able to say, right, you've got to make a bloody cushion or you've got to make macaroons or something. Yeah. Or other. It's, yeah. yeah. So I guess the other question, if anybody, does anybody have any questions from the chat box? Oh, you guys are chatting with each other. You're so funny. <laughs> um, would you do it again? Suzette, would you do it again? <laughs> Is that a crazy question? I don't, I don't know if I would do, put myself through this again, unless it was like an enormous amount of money. You know, if it was like 100K, let's do this all over again. It's like, right. yes. Right, right. Well, I, guess I would second that. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So, to you, to Philip, do you feel like this had this helped in a way in 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 raising awareness of your work? Or do you feel like this is one good part of it? Like, where would you put that in? Definitely has. Yeah, it definitely has. Um, when I look at the analytics for my store, half my hits are from Canada now. Oh, so wow. that's been helpful. I'm <laughs> grateful for that. I'm just oh. hoping um it makes its way to a very famous streaming platform in America because we need that market and we need those eyeballs. So that's, yeah. that, that would be, if that works out, I will consider it a total win, but yeah. there were definitely some challenging aspects yeah. to filming that. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. So let's do one more round Robin and last set of questions from the chat box. What did you learn from each other? That's a great question. Sheila wants to know, what did you learn from each other? <laughs> I think um, I learned multiple techniques from other people that I had never used before. So that was really helpful. Okay. Techniques. And Stephen? Um, I, I, I think that, 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 you know, looking at like what Philip does and I, I, you know, I still can't work it out and I still can't do it. I still can't cut a piece of cardboard in a straight line, and make a chair out of it. And, it, and it's astounding what he does. And it's, it's good to see how else you can make something. You don't just have to make it like the way I make it. And, it, and it's sort of brilliant. And it, it's, it's sort of like, and, and the story thing, you know, like Suzette, you know, you can make a story out of a house and, and it's brilliant to follow it through. Yeah. And Suzette, what'd you say? Oh, I, I feel like I, I learned a lot of little techniques from everyone. Yeah. But one of the things that constantly sticks out to me is when Stephen, he had this, this one episode where he made a ton of books just with, I can't remember. Twigs, twigs. they were twigs from the park. <laughs> but then he just, he like, he covered them with, what was it, leather? And then he yeah, just yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah, so he cut them. So there were 20 different books. 
And wow. when I make books, I do them individually, but he just, he did them like yeah, all of them together. And that stuck out to me. Yeah. I mean, I just in the short pieces that I saw, I definitely sort of very shared experience. You guys were very good to each other. They, you know, they showed that, which is, and it's coming through even in this little chat box. So it's really nice to see. You guys are just awesome. Thank you so much for being on. I encourage folks to look, if you're in Canada, obviously watch the series and in the UK, we are hoping it comes to the US for sure. Um, and we will be looking for it. But in the meantime, I encourage everybody at home to go check out um, each of these guys' Instagram accounts and follow their work because it's fantastic. Thank you guys for joining on this Meet the Miniatures. Thank you guys at home for joining. Um, to be sure to join next week. I'll have another Meet the Miniaturist. This has been awesome. Thank you all. Have a great rest of your week and enjoy the rest of the week. And thank you for joining today. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right, thank bye you. guys. Thank you. Bye.